let's talk more about some male anatomy. So here is a lateral view of the a male and the kind of inside of a male. Um, ignore this arrow, although I am going to um, tell you about that some. So let's start, let's start this end here. Um, this is the penis, this entire thing here, right? And this here is the urethra. So this is where urine comes out as well as sperm. So there's a common duct for both of those here. You can see that those are going to split back here. So let's continue along this way. Um, kind of this kind of in no particular order. We're gonna walk through the sperm coming out later. So we'll do this in kind of order of sperm, the pathway the, ster the sperm make. So let's just go over here. Here is the scrotum. And now we've done the two things. Basically, you can see from the outside here, the penis and the scrotum. Um, the scrotum is the basically the sac that holds the, I'm going to put testis, similar, uh, singular here, the singular testis. And then this other thing wrapped around the testis, this is the epididymis, hard word to spell. Got it right. No, I didn't. Miss Epididymis. Okay. Let's see. Let's go up here. We've got a couple other tubes and glands that I wanted to tell you about. We're not going to do every single thing on this that's shown here. So this gland right here, this is the prostate gland, a structure that males have but not females. We've got our, the, what the arrow's pointing to here is the seminal vesicle or seminal gland. So there's several glands. There's one more, and then I will say what I was gonna say here. Um, this one right here is our bulbo-urethral gland. And these three glands are going to contribute at parts of semen. So they're all going to contribute to this along the sperm's path to become part of semen on the way out of the body. Um, on that note, let me make sure. So there's different names for the urethra all around here. I'm not going to focus on the different names. Um, here, though, this is going to be our ejaculatory duct. So you might be able to see um, that the bladder is this, this is gonna be your ureter. We're not gonna worry about that right now, but this is where the ejaculatory duct is gonna contain the semen. It's going to um, combine or enter the ureter to, to exit the body. Is there anything else I want to tell you here? Um, yes, where is our, oh, maybe I can't see it from this view. Yes, I can. Okay, there it is. Yeah, yeah, there it is. So coming from the epididymis, there's a tube running up along here past the seminal vesicles. This here is actually just the ampulla of this cord. So we're not gonna worry about that, but that's why it looks different. This is our vas deferens, also called ductus deferens, the tube that goes from the epididymis to past the seminal vesicles to um, into the ejaculatory duct. This is just a, a large part of the ampulla of it. Um, I think that that is everything. One thing I just want to note, because it's really cool. So notice how this is all spongy looking. So the tissue of the penis itself is, there's three different layers here and it's all pretty spongy. In fact, this one is called corpus, which refers to body, right? Spun, let me fix, if I spell this right. No, it's just how it looks, spongiosum. Corpus spongiosum. So when the parasympathetic nervous system starts kicking in and causing erection, this fills with blood, like a sponge. 
is actually due to nitric oxide, which acts as a um, paracrine hormone, and that increases the blood flow in the penis. Once the blood flow increases to a certain amount, it kind of cuts off the blood flow in back. So it's kind of almost a little positive feedback type system that causes erection. Remember, eventually ejaculation is going to be caused by or stimulated by the sympathetic nervous system. So it's an example where the two autonomic surface nervous system components divisions work together to cause a ultimate function.